Good morning. Welcome to St. Francis of Assisi American National Catholic Church. And today we truly welcome all creatures of our God and King. Um, we offer our Mass today for the eternal repose of the souls of Stephen, Chris Lanton, and John Hurley. To open today, we'll be singing All Creatures of Our God and King, which is number 714 in the Glory and Praise, number 714 all creatures of our God and King. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to our celebration for Mass on the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And it is also uh, the opportunity for us in a very real and important way to acknowledge our patronal feast, St. Francis of Assisi, who is patron of the environment, but is renowned and well known for his love of animals. <laughs> all of God's creatures uh, united to God uh, through the person of Christ. And so today, all of our uh, four-legged or two-legged companions are welcome here uh, for the wonderful celebration of the Eucharist. It might get a little loud with some of the barking, but in some ways maybe that's, uh, maybe that's our creatures adding to the prayer. So as we do always, we take a moment to call to mind our failings and our shortcomings. Aware that this God who loves us brings us healing and forgiveness, and together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God, the Father, mercies through the death and resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The angels and the archangels, let's raise our voices in that wonderful hymn of praise the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people.
is the vineyard and its harvest, yours the kingdom of justice and peace. You call your people to tend its growth. Bless the work entrusted to our hands that we may offer you an abundance of just works and a rich harvest of peace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judgment between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its head, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first. And, then they, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants? They said to them, they said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to, to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is amusing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you 
and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, the good news of salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So happy feast of, Saint, oh, uh, of uh, our patron. <laughs> so the parable we heard today clearly shows the tension between Jesus and the religious authorities of his time. So um, it's a little graphic, maybe not quite PG-13, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And in the parable, we see how the tenants of the vineyard clearly identified as the chief priests and the elders. God is the landowner, and the tenants, the servants rather, would be the prophets that he sends. And the landowner's son is Jesus himself. But this, despite the stubbornness and rejection of his own people, Jesus did not give up on them. He remained strong in his resolve to, to go on with the cross, to continue to be the savior of the world. Well, many of us, when faced with rejection, would have simply given up. Many of us are afraid of rejection, and we do have a good reason to be afraid. Fear of rejection is hardwired in our brain. It is a primal fear. Research in neuroscience has shown that the brain processes social rejection in a way that activates regions associated with physical pain. In primitive humans, being in a community was a key to survival. And being ostracized from a community meant certain death. Sometimes the thought of being rejected cripples us. We are crippled by our fears, and therefore we rather go unnoticed, go under the radar, or man just maintain the status quo. We sometimes are afraid to rock the boat. But if we are to do God's will, and to listen what the Holy Spirit continues to tell us, it challenges us always to step out of our comfort zone. It is the Holy Spirit that prompts us to be heralds of the gospel, to proclaim our truth, to be prophets of our time. And the path of being a prophet, almost always, we will encounter hardships and rejection. As Catholics who proclaim God's inclusive love, being open and affirming, and welcoming married persons and women in ordained ministry, we are sometimes met with harsh lectures from those who consider themselves defenders of the faith. And many years ago, I remember Bishop George receiving a letter to cease and desist. And if we lived at a different time, we might pay for our preaching with our lives, even being burned at the stake. I remember when our parish had a booth um, in Jacob Javits Center, to attend an LGBTQ expo many, many years ago, many came to our booth who were curious about the parish, and for the most part, it was a pleasant experience. I was wearing my Franciscan habit, which made me kind of stand out. However, uh, there was a temporary moment when I was left by myself in the booth, and a handful of people approached me and said very hurtful things. Thinking I was deceiving them, and they were expressing how the church had hurt them. I understood their pain, and I had to welcome and endure their hurt, as if somehow I am a proxy of those that may have hurt them. If by welcoming their insults and hurt would bring them closure, I would not mind enduring it. If only I could offer them comfort or somehow apologize on behalf of the church, then go ahead, 
pour out all your hurts if it would ease, help, at least help their burden. And that moment was not a moment of discouragement, but a moment of realization on how good and well-intentioned people who follow church rules and completely disregard pastoral uh, care could do a lot of harm. It was also a moment of validation for myself that I must continue to do what I do to let others realize that God does not, ha that does, does not hate or abandon anyone. Despite the challenges, how we are continuing to proclaim God's all-inclusive love, giving the sacraments of the church without hopes to those who sincerely ask for them. I am glad, I am glad today to read headlines of the Holy Father considering blessing same-sex unions, which somehow tells me that the Holy Spirit continues to work to open church doors to those who have been excluded. But I'm sure it's going to be an uphill battle. And perhaps because of what we do here in the American National Catholic Church, many who look upon us might be changed themselves. And I see ourselves as trailblazers in our journeys. As I was writing this homily, I just can't help but to be disheartened by the news of war in Israel. And we are ever more challenged to become a unifying and loving presence in our world, torn by hatred and conflict. We are called to be peacemakers. And I would like to end our, my, my homily with an excerpt that is famously, excerpt from a famous, famously known prayer called Oscar Romero's Prayer, as an encouragement for all of us to continue to become prophets and may we never be deterred by any form of rejection, but be challenged by them. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything. And there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end result, but that is, that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders. Ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of the future, not our own. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us stand and profess our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, for all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, true God from not made, but the Father. Through God all things remain, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, who was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and punched his father. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again and fulfilled his scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in 
one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining all creation, groaning for our prayers to be answered, we now petition God our Father through Christ his Son. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the pets we love and for all the animals you have created. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the AMCC, that we may be a fruitful garden, producing a harvest rich in justice, compassion, mercy, and forgiveness. We remember especially the ANCC Franciscan of Mercy. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who tend the fields and bring food to our table, that God will strengthen them and protect them in their labors. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace in their world, especially in the war-torn countries, Israel and Ukraine, that we may heed God's call to love to be peacemakers. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of injustice, that God will help us recognize systematic injustice and give courage to all who are working to change, the, to change society. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are recovering from natural disaster, that God will give them the strength to face their challenges, speed the assistance that they need, and fill their hearts with peace. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and for their caregivers, are there any that we should specially remember? We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for those who mourn them, are there any specially that we should remember? And we pray for Stephen, Chris, Lanton, and John Hurley. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We give God thanks for these wonderful companions in our life who show us in so many ways the unconditional love of God in our lives. Uh, that God might uh, uh, sustain them and help us be good stewards. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as always, we pray for those who have no one to pray for them. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So you were given a little card when you first came in. If you wouldn't mind concluding our prayer of the faithful with raising your right hand for our, our wonderful animal companions. As we say, we say it together. Blessed are you, Lord God, maker of all living creatures. On the fifth and sixth days of creation, you call forth fish in the sea, birds in the air, and animals on the land. You inspired St. Francis to call all of them his brothers and sisters. We ask you to bless the animals and all living creatures by the power of love, enable them to live according to your plan. May we always praise you for all your beauty and creation. Blessed are you. The hymn today will be the prayer of St. Francis, which is song number 679 in the glory and praise, number 679, prayer of St. Francis.
So pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's church. Lord God, accept the sacrifice which we celebrate at your command and offer as a sign of our faithful service. Through its powers, accomplish within us the holy work of your redemption. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. All things are of your making. All times and seasons obey your law. But you fashioned the human family in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder that we might be stewards of your creation, praising you day by day for the marvels of your might and wisdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the joyful hymn of your praise. indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to the setting, a pure offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Lord God, we humbly pray by the power of your Spirit to sanctify these gifts we have brought before you, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was handed over to death, he took bread. He gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to all of those whom he loved, and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. And handing the cup to all of those whom he loved, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Calling to mind, Lord God, the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and eagerly awaiting the day of his return, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and see the victim by whose sacrifice you were pleased to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son might be filled with the Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. Let him make us an everlasting gift to you, that we may share in the inheritance of your saints. With Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Francis and St. Clair, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servants, the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome, George, our bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, all ministers of your church, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Merciful Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you and unite to yourself all your children now scattered over the face of the earth. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy with them your everlasting glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you give the world everything that is good. <clears throat> through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Peace, everybody. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. My sisters and brothers, this is Jesus, our Lamb of God. This is Jesus, our Prince of Peace. This is Jesus who invites each and every one of us into the experience of God's love and how happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. communion hymn today will be Peace is Flowing Like a River, which is number 675 in the glory and praise, number 675, Peace is Flowing Like a River.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, may the bread we have broken and the cup we have tasted fill us with life and goodness and transform us into, Christ, into the Christ we have received, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So uh, there's always uh, a lot uh, here at St. Francis, but I wanted to acknowledge uh, Joan, who is our uh, catechetical director, her daughter Kate, who teaches with us, her and her husband, Nick, who is somewhere here, uh, they're celebrating their 17th wedding anniversary. Oh, yeah. so. <laughs> so it is proof that it works, right? So uh, if you would be just for a moment, Joan is uh, uh, just going to uh, talk very briefly about our catechetical program. So I know I have to make it short, and um, because it was a feast day, um, the the clergy thought maybe we should talk about it, but we're all volunteers, and we're very happy and welcoming to, to work with you, and we're very happy to have our community. The nuts and bolts are we meet approximately twice a month, and we, have a ca we eat at 10 o'clock, so then sometimes we can participate in the Mass in a special way. And we serve the children K-8, to eight, and we have three sacramental programs this year, Communion, Reconciliation, and Confirmation. And each week we have a newsletter. So we do follow the liturgical year. And we try to, um, thanks to my daughter Kate, we have a wonderful newsletter that um, keeps up the homeschool connection and explains the main idea of what we try to do. Our prayers, our program follows the church, the liturgical year. And we have gospel weeklies for the older children. And we try to have the gospel become alive and meaningful the children that are living in our turbulent times of 2023. And we have many active and cooperation projects like the St. Francis displays you see here. And also we um, had readers today. We have treats for the animals. 
afterwards, and those that are left over will give to Paws, which is a shelter for cats and dogs in, in um, Montclair. We, for the most part, though, we can boil it down that we follow Jesus' greatest commandment. That is, as Sister Mari used to say, love God and love others. Right, yeah. Sister? And that's the essence of what we try to do. It. We know that our neighbors are not just those that live by us, but are everyone. Everyone is a child of God. And we follow our patron saint who said on the wall another place, you know, preach the gospels every day and only if you have to, use words. <laughs> In other words, um, act on the love of God. And we follow the path of Jesus is that they say, when have you served me, Jesus said, when you serve the least of all my brothers. And we want to spread that love and peace and we welcome everyone to join at any time and we're always here to give information. And we wish you all a day of love and a world of peace. Thank Thanks, you. Joan. Joan is being somewhat modest. Our children here in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the catechetical program uh, with their teachers, Loretta, Sister Maria, Kate, uh, they, um, they serve uh, at... And, and Loretta, sorry, did I say? And Mora, where's Mora? Anyway, um, they, um, there are places that we are chaplains at that, uh, that uh, I assure them that they are a part of this parish and the children make them feel that way. So often they'll bring, they'll bring cards, cards for them, for the uh, major major these days, so folks at the Alzheimer's unit and at the, the psychiatric hospital. We used to be, used to be down at the, at the, the jail, but, but uh, uh, luckily, thanks to God, 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 they no longer have that immigration, that, uh, immigration contract. Is great. Great. But, our but our children are wonderful. They are the future of our church, right? This particular Sunday, we used to call it homecoming because... What Father Titi said about the National Catholic Church, and in particular, St. Francis of Assisi, we really do uh, try to make everyone welcome into the full experience of the incarnation of Christ in the sacramental life of the church. And so we marry about 80 couples throughout the year all over the place, and right. then we so invite, then we them, invite back, them back, right? right? Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes they come, they come some sometimes they don't. Uh, but uh, generally, but generally uh, we, uh, we invite folks to come, to come back. back. Uh, we baptize, uh, during COVID, I think we baptized 45 infants, right? So, so we invite people to come back to experience the community in which uh, they were provided some of the, the richness of the graces of the church. And then, uh, this just so happens to coincide with our wonderful uh, animal companions. Many of you know me know that I'm an animal lover, so I, I knew Scout since he was a puppy. Uh, I, uh, Lucy is uh, very much like my golden retriever at home. Bandit is new to us. Where else do I see some? I'm going to ask you, uh, we're going to bless them before I give you the final blessing, all right? So I'm going to get the, you and them a little wet, I suspect, right? So, uh, so your response will be, um, will be uh, 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 blessed be God forever. So if you want to stand or hold your animals, or if you have pictures of animals, great. I love that, right? I love that. This morning at the hospital, everybody had little uh, pictures uh, that they drew. God created us and placed us on this earth to be stewards of all living things and so to proclaim the glory of their creator. Let us then praise God, praise God saying, blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, who created the animals and gave us the ability to train them to help us in our work. Let us bless the Lord. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, who gave us food from animals to replenish our energies. Let us bless the Lord. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, who for the sake of our comfort gives us domestic animals as companions. Let us bless the Lord. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, who show us a sign of your providence as your son told us by caring for the birds of the air. Let us bless the Lord. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, who offered your Son to us as the Paschal Lamb, and in him willed that we should be called and should truly be your children. Let us bless the Lord. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, who through your lowliest creatures never cease to draw us towards your love. Let us bless the Lord. Blessed be God forever. O God, the author and giver of every good gift, animals are part of the way of, 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 of life that you provide us. They help with our needs and labors. We pray through the intercession of St. Francis that you will make of them 
that you will make available for us, to, for our use and for our comfort, the things that we need to maintain a, a dignified and decent life for them and for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless our creatures and us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hi, Lucy. <laughs> You have an animal that you didn't very just remember them, right? Just remember them? Okay, you little wet kids, right? So. Yes. 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 Hey, yes. 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 <laughs> so immediately after mass if you go out the door and make a left uh, here at St. Francis we like food so you're going to find some food for us and for our creatures right so please uh, sister uh, uh, um, um, Joan and the children made some packages for our dogs, so and our cats, so and our cats, our cats. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So the Lord be with you. But out for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord let His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth from this place in great peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's thank our wonderful musicians for this beautiful music today. Right? So. Um, our closing hymn is Simple Gifts, which you might not think you know, but you might be surprised. It's number 583, Simple Gifts. Number 583. <coughs> Do you want the book? It is a gift to be simple. It is a gift to be free. It is a gift to come down where we are.